So let's talk about organic functional groups. They're where the action is in organic molecules. Remember, functional groups provide the properties for the molecule. They give the molecule specific chemical and physical properties. They classify the molecule into one or more families. They provide naming portions, especially the ending of the name. And the key feature is that members of the same organic family have similar physical properties and often very similar reactions. You have a chart of functional groups. First, let's take a really quick look at the functional groups for carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds. The carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds are single bonds, and there are no other important groupings. Then the molecule belongs to the hydrocarbon family alkane. If anywhere in the molecule there's a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond, then that compound belongs to the hydrocarbon family alkene. If anywhere in the molecule there's a carbon-to-carbon -carbon triple bond, then that molecule belongs to the hydrocarbon family alkyne. If the molecule contains this unusual grouping, which is a six-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds all the way around the ring, this particular structural feature places the molecule in a different hydrocarbon family, the hydrocarbon family aromatic. Aromatics have some similarities to alkenes in terms of what they look like. They seem to have carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds. But in terms of their properties, they're actually much more like alkanes. They needed to be put in a different family because in spite of the appearance in this picture, they are not alkenes. They are their own family. There are a large number of functional groups which contain oxygen. Alcohol, C, single bond O, single bond H. Phenols, which are a special case of alcohol, with an OH bonded directly to one of the carbons of an aromatic ring. These are sometimes called aromatic alcohols, usually called phenols. Aldehyde, C, double bond O, and one side of the C has to have an H. Ketone, C double bond O, and on both sides of that carbonyl carbon are other carbons. Ethers, C single bond O, single bond C. Carboxylic acid, C double bond O, that same C has an O, H single bonded to it. That whole cluster is a carboxylic acid. It's not two groups put together, it's one group. C double bond O, single bond O, single bond H. Ester, which is considered a derivative of the carboxylic acid, where we have the same grouping except where there's an H in a carboxylic acid, there are additional carbons in an ester. There are two functional groups containing nitrogen that are part of this course, amines, where this looks very complicated, but all it's really trying to say is that there's a nitrogen with three bonds to it, and at least one of the bonds has to be to a carbon. It can be all three bonds to carbons, two bonds to carbons, or just one bond to carbon. But to be an organic compound, at least one of these bonds has to be to carbon. And then there is an amide, which is a functional group containing both oxygen and nitrogen. It has C double bond O, and that same carbon is single bonded to a nitrogen. That area makes this an amide. So let's go looking for organic functional groups in some medications and drugs. The goal here is to learn to recognize the cluster that makes that area of the molecule belong to a certain functional group family. So here's the drug ibuprofen, an over-the-counter NSAID, analgesic fever reducer. Let's look for functional groups in it. When you're looking for functional groups, remember to look for heteroatoms, things other than carbon, and also unusual bonds. So here's an area that might be interesting, and here's an area that might be interesting. Otherwise, we just seem to have a lot of carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bonds. Every organic compound is going to have some carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bonds in it, so we never use the family alkane unless there's nothing else going on in the molecule. So in spite of all these carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bonds, this molecule will not be placed in alkanes. This area will create some functional group behavior, and this area will. See if you can figure out what those groups are by referring to a functional group chart. Eventually, you need to be able to recognize the functional groups without reference to a chart. So there's one cluster, C double bond O, O, H, ah, that's a carboxylic acid. Here's the other interesting area, a six-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds. Aha, if I look that up, that's one of the hydrocarbon functional groups, that's an aromatic. Those two groups will give this molecule its reactivity, its properties, and actually are a big part of why it acts as an analgesic.
Here's another medication, albuterol. I've already highlighted one of the functional groups, C, single bond, O, H. Can you find any other areas of interest? There's actually quite a few in this. There's something going on here, 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 and here. So let's try identifying some of these. Refer to your functional group chart. There's some more alcohols. Alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Then what's this? This is that hydrocarbon group alternating single and double bonds all the way around a six-membered ring. That's an aromatic. So what's going on over here? That is a nitrogen bonded to a carbon, bonded to a hydrogen, and bonded to another carbon. So that's a nitrogen with three single bonds to it. That's an amine. So this molecule has all of those functional groups and its character, its performance, its ability to do what it does, which is be a bronchodilator, comes from those different groupings and how those groupings allow it to interact with various receptors in the body. One of the alcohols in this molecule should actually be classified slightly differently. It's an alcohol group, an OH, connected directly to a carbon of an aromatic ring. That makes it a phenol, a subclass of alcohols with their own unique properties. Can you find the phenol? Here's two molecules that are sometimes considered very similar, but in fact, if you look at their structures, they're quite different. The one on the left, acetylsalicylic acid, is aspirin, and the one on the right, acetaminophen, is Tylenol. They actually are both analgesics and fever reducers, but they do not act on the same system in the body. Aspirin can handle certain kinds of pain, prostaglandin-induced pain, that acetaminophen simply cannot touch. Acetaminophen can cause liver toxicity, aspirin can cause blood clotting issues. So they have very different groups and it's the very different groups that make their mechanism of action different. But for now, let's just look for the group. So remember, focus on heteroatom and unusual bonding and let's see what we can find. There we go. C double bond O, some carbons over here. And then what's on the other side? Oh, an oxygen. Okay, C double bond O, O. So does it have an H? No, so it's not a carboxylic acid. It has more carbons. C double bond O, O, C. That makes that an ester. And then what else do we have? Well, we've got another one of those aromatic rings. And what else do we have? Ah, here's our carboxylic acid. C double bond O, single bond O, H. Look at the difference between an ester and a carboxylic acid. C double bond O, O, and carbons. C double bond O, O, and an H. So we have an ester, an aromatic, and a carboxylic acid. And it turns out that all three of those regions are very important in getting this molecule to interact with the enzyme that essentially shuts down the production of the prostaglandins that cause inflammatory pain. So how about acetaminophen? Here we have a group, C double bond O, single bond N, O. Well, that's C double bond O, single bond N. That's an amide. And then we have another one of those aromatics. And then we have an alcohol hanging off over here. So we have amide, aromatic, alcohol. And again, there's an alcohol in Tylenol that would be better classed as a phenol. Quite different than ester, aromatic, carboxylic acid. Very different structures, very different mechanisms of action. So let's compare cocaine and procaine, novocaine. They're actually more related to each other than you might think. Cocaine has an amine. It has two esters, C double bond O, single bond O, carbons. C double bond O, single bond O, carbons, esters. And it has an aromatic. This area right here is called the bicyclic ring. It's two rings that are only partially connected to each other. That's a very important structural feature in cocaine, but it isn't any kind of specific functional group. So here's procaine. We still have an amine. We have an ester. See double bond O, single bond O, and carbons. We have an aromatic, and we have another amine way out over here. So this molecule actually has a lot of the functional group features, and if you kind of count it carefully, if we start here at this amine, which has carbons on all three places, 
This amine has carbons on all three places. And we have just one, two, three carbons till we get to an ester, or one, two, three carbons till we get to an ester. So here from this nitrogen, we have one, two carbons till we get to an ester, a little bit shorter. Then we have the ester, and there's an ester on an aromatic ring, just like down here. And so actually, this structure right here is very much like, watch me trace, that part of cocaine. And in fact, those common structural features are part of what let procaine be used as local or topical anesthetic, a local anesthetic. Cocaine would also be a great local anesthetic, except it's so addictive that you don't use it that way. But procaine is actually built off of the structure of cocaine modeled after cocaine with the removal of the groups that seem to cause the addictive nature. For example, this particular ester is a really bad actor in this structure. It keeps what it needs to be able to be an anesthetic and got rid of what was there in cocaine that caused the addictiveness of the molecule. And its name actually speaks to its parentage. Procaine came from cocaine not naturally, but made in the laboratory to model this particular grouping of cocaine, which is called its pharmacophore. So how about morphine and codeine? We have a similar kind of thing going on here, except that nature did this. So here we have two alcohol groups. What else do we have in the structure of morphine? Well, there's another one of those aromatics. And then we have, oh, an N with carbons to three single bonds. That's an amine. And what's this over here? C, single bond O, single bond C. It also closes a ring, but that's an ether. Then we've got one more functional group in morphine. Can you find it? See this? Different bond? That makes an alkene. So morphine has two alcohols, one on an aromatic ring. It has an ether in a cyclic system. It has an amine. This is actually called a tertiary amine because all three groups are carbon. And it has an alkene. Opium poppies make this compound naturally. This compound is a fantastic painkiller. Unfortunately, it's addictive. It's also got antitussive behavior. In other words, it can reduce cough. It reduces respiration, too, which is a negative thing about it. So what about codeine? Opium poppies also make codeine. Let's compare its functional groups to morphine. It's got an alcohol. It's got that same alkene. It's got that same tertiary amine. Boy, they're looking awfully similar got an aromatic. Oh, here's a difference. This has an alcohol off the aromatic ring, and this has C single bond O, C, an ether off the aromatic ring. And then we have one more functional group right here, an ether, C, O, C. So they have essentially identical structures with this one difference, an alcohol off the aromatic ring in morphine, and an ether off the aromatic ring in codeine. That doesn't seem like a very huge difference. Instead of an H, we have a CH3, but that actually makes their behavior very, very different. Codeine isn't a particularly good painkiller. Having that group allows morphine to go places and do things that this grouping does not. Codeine is pretty good at reducing cough, and codeine has less addictive nature than morphine does. That one tiny change appears to be tiny change, OH, to OCH3 creates the very large difference in their property. All of this that stays the same is why they can act similarly. 